All right, so your flight control system is mounted in your rocket. You're ready to go and you just want to test it out. Before we get started here, I want to note, this is a full completed rocket. And the only reason it looks this way is because I forgot to record this portion of the video at the correct time. So it's okay if your rocket looks white and unpainted or if it looks unfinished, this is not normally how it would look at this face. So we're gonna go through a few things here. The first is I wanna look at the startup procedure. I've got a spent motor in the motor mount here. And we're going to go ahead and boot up the computer and just take a look at what goes on. So it turns on, it moves the motor around a little bit. It gimbals it up and down on each axis. On each axis. This is to make sure that all the axes are clear and that there's no jams. If that ever doesn't look, you know, like it's actuating to the full extent, you know, you might want to check it out to see if there are any jams in there. Um, so let's go ahead and boot it up one more time. Before we do, I want to call attention to something. So I've got a little signal computer here. This is how it's mounted in the rocket right now. It's laying flat on its back, and during startup, the TVC mount does one quick check that the user can sort of ensure, even on the field, like right on the launch pad, that everything is wired up correctly. So during startup, it's going to gimbal the motor up and to my left or your right. Um, so if it were facing towards you like this in a rocket that was upright, it would gimbal the motor toward you and toward your right. Um, and so let's watch that now really quickly. So it starts up, and there it is. So it's going up and to the right, or up and to your right, yeah. Um, and so this is a check of the TVC wiring. If any of the TVC wiring is misaligned, it won't go in that exact direction. So if it doesn't do that, you know something's wrong. Okay, now before we get to our little test flight here, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna take this piece of motor tube and put it over the existing motor in the rocket's TVC mount. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this, you don't have to do it if you're building your own kit, but the only reason that I am is so that you can see on the video that the rocket is actually doing thrust vectoring. So I'm gonna start up the computer here. Just going through the startup sequence, all the checks. Okay, so we're in the green blinky mode, which once again, that's the pad idle mode. This means that the rocket is ready to go. If you were to light the motor right now, well, it would burn right through my leg, but it would be fine. The rocket would start thrust vectoring. It would all be ready to go. So here we go. We're going to launch the rocket in three, two, one. Okay, so we've got like a little party mode going on here. If I move the rocket this way or move it this way or really just any way, it's going to be thrust vectoring. I'm going to jolt it down to simulate burnout. It's going to be white for a little bit, and then at some point it'll turn yellow to sort of detect that we've passed apogee. Um, it's looking at the barometer to detect that. And then, in just a minute, there it is. Okay, so once it starts turning red and blinking white, uh, that means it detects that we have landed. That means that it has been looking at the barometer and it's seen that we've uh, been, I think it's under five meters or under four meters for five or seven seconds. Either way, it's landing detection. So what it's doing right now is it's moving all of the flight data that's been logged, which is a lot, by the way, all of the flight data from the flash chip, the flash memory chip on board into the micro SD card that you inserted in the signal computer earlier. So that's what it's doing right now. It takes kind of a while depending on how long your flight was. If you have a really long flight, sometimes it can take like 10 or 15 minutes just because it's a lot of data and writing to an SD card is a lot slower than a flash memory chip. Lastly, here we go. We've got the blue and green with the sort of happy little beeps. This means your rocket is all safe to be shut down. So I'm gonna do that now. And that's that. All right, so next up we have a flight abort test. What we're gonna simulate here is a bad flight. I'm gonna go ahead and boot the computer up. I'm gonna let it go into the pad idle mode again. And then as soon as the vehicle launches, I'm gonna pitch it over pretty hard. And it's gonna make a tiny little beep noise to tell us that something is wrong and it's aborted the flight. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, so it was really hard to hear but it made a little as soon as it passed a certain point, which I think in this case was 25 or 30 degrees. And that's the criteria that the rocket's looking for during powered flight to determine if the flight is going well. So obviously if your rocket is, you know, has considerable power under it and it's traveling upward, you want to make sure that everything's going well. And if something isn't, you want to perform an in-flight abort. And what happens when it passes that threshold and makes that beeping noise is it fires channels one and two. Pyro channels one and two, whatever's connected to them will fire, as long as they're above four meters above ground. Even if we were to have things connected to the flight computer right now, shoot-wise, 
None of them would deploy because the whole rocket is under four meters above ground level. Anyway, so we finished our flight sequence here and we're ready to move on to the next section. And that next section is a parachute ejection test. I'll boot up the flight computer here and then connect to it with my phone. We'll tap on signal R2, go into pyro control, and then notice that the pyro one has that cont symbol again, which means we're connected up and ready to go. I did a truly award-winning job at forgetting to record good audio for this segment, so I'll describe what's going on now. The rocket is sitting on a box tilted up at an angle. We're gonna fire the parachutes out of the rocket using the signal app. We'll go to the pyro testing page and then we'll click arm and fire to make sure that the parachute system works. I'll keep the, uh, the phone pointed toward the screen so you can see what's going on. All right, so here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, fire. And there we go. So that's, that is a successful ejection test of the piston ejection system. Um, the piston didn't come out all the way, which is great. We don't, I mean, we don't want it to like have too much power. The chute's ejected, obviously. And so I think we're ready to fly. Well, not quite yet. We have a couple more things to do, but this is a good test. By doing this, we have confirmation that our parachutes work well. It's much better to find out that something is broken on the ground than it is in the air, which is why it's a good idea to do these tests. Right here, I'm loading the piston and the parachutes back into the rocket. After this, we'll open up the rocket again and replace that spent pyro charge that we just used. To make sure I can't mistakenly connect this again, I'm going to just snip the leads. Then we'll unravel the pyro charge that we didn't fire and connect it up to the alligator clips just like before. Once again, I'll use a piece of tape to protect these clips from shorting out during flight. With that done, we'll put the airframe together and move on to the next section.